hauled me out of the car and started licking me with the baton. Yes? Oh my. Came Mr. Walter Rodney. He was a lecturer in history. Mm -hmm. Um, you ever took any of his from Guy, no, I did no history. No, okay. no, I, I, I did languages, but I went to some of his lectures mm -hmm. because he was very popular on campus. He was an activist, you know, very mm -hmm. fiery lecturer, and um, he went outside of the campus also and engaged the Rastas and so on and okay. tried to elevate people. In other words, to raise the consciousness. Of the people that he saw as downtrodden under the colonial system, you know, okay. the usual thing. Mm -hmm. So when so the government, of course, were the, the government was not enamored of this guy. Mm -hmm. So the first chance they got, he had gone to a conference in Canada, and while he was away, they declared him persona non grata, and oh. and, and, and um, he was prevented from re-entering. Mm -hmm. and returning to Jamaica. So mm -hmm. when we got wind of that, students decided to um, pro protest. Right. So that sort of became a big cause celeb. The campus was besieged for nearly a week, for about five days. Nobody could leave or enter. Really? Ooh, students blocking it? The students blocked on the inside because it was regional headquarters. I mean, it was it was a regional entity. So right. We felt that the national police had no right mm -hmm. to come on our campus. Mm -hmm. So we had, and the lecturers um, at the time, including the vice chancellor, Sir Philip Sherlock, supported the students' position. Okay. So we had teams, including lecturers, that would man the gates on the inside. And of course, the police surrounded it on the outside. Okay. Nobody could leave our end. So where were you? Were you inside? Or I outside? was inside. I was inside. Okay then. And then we decided to march to Garden, to Garden House downtown mm -hmm. to protest. Hold on, you have to take me back to when you start. Cause you never yeah, yeah, well, start that's with the day. Well, that's the day. That's that the was day. the day. That's what was the day. That's the day where you get the yes, fire. Yes, in yes, there. yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the day now yeah transport uh, when, our protesters yeah so I, I I held back a bit because mm -hmm. I say you know the government might have very good reason I don't know mm -hmm. I have some intelligence about what Mr. Rodman was doing and you know I'm being a loyal Jamaican and right. I better not push up myself into this just you know right. be a jerk but at the same time um, I was one of the few people on campus with a car mm -hmm. and everybody wanted <laughs> to engage me now to transport them to go mm -hmm. downtown. So I said, okay, and I want a muckle, you know, yeah. I, want, I want to see what's going on. Right. So I, I decided to drive my car with mm -hmm. the students. And when I reach Matilda's corner, mm -hmm. police stopped me and orders out of the car. Mm -hmm. You know, we had our guns hidden. We didn't have it in obvious things. So I said, I protested and said, but what, what, what am I being stopped for? Right. I'm on my legitimate business. So, yeah, man, I'm a student, I'm a student. And he says, I was stopped. Now, when I rolled to a stop, I didn't I ease my foot off the brake a little bit, and my car brushed a policeman. Not hit him, I would have said brushing brush yeah, pads. Yeah. But he took umbrage, hauled me out of the car, and started licking me with the baton. Yes. Oh my gosh. So um, that forced me now to be involved. You get fired after that. Fired because that is police brutality. True. So before I know it, I was part of the the, 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 the march, and put, we had our guns hidden. So you go down there the same evening you go march. The same day, yes, man. Park mm. my car, park my car in Ligani, mm. and um, I was with the students, and we marched all the way downtown on Duke Street to mm. Garden Town. So we got tear gas along the way because I don't know, the police instructions apparently was at no cost. Mm -hmm. I don't know if their intelligence or whatever instruction mm -hmm. they got that we must not be allowed to go to Jamaica House because we're oh. coming down Hope Road. Mm -hmm, we're mm -hmm. coming down Hope Road and they say at no terms. So they've started to throw the gas now just before we come to um, to, 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 to uh, Jamaica House. Mm -hmm. But we had the people, we, we were well supported by other people, including bus drivers. You know what the bus mm -hmm. used to do? They would let us in at the line, at the police line. Mm -hmm. The bus would stop, let us in through the front door, mm -hmm. and then let us out in the back door. 
<laughs> so we get past the police line. Oh, yes. And mm -hmm. I remember a lady who lived, she was in a house right in front of Jamaica House, mm -hmm. right at the corner of Arden Road and Hope Road. And she had her garden hose and she had loads of rags. Mm -hmm. And she would wet the rags and give it all to our okay. students so that we could, um, you know, mm -hmm. cover our faces to prevent the burning from tear gas. Ah, very nice. That's so we had right. support, you know, from the In In, the in retrospect, did you do the right thing? Absolutely. But what was sad though, when I came back to Hall that evening mm -hmm. and I was watching the news, I was incensed what the news media showed they had writing that mm -hmm. took place you know and they tried to blame who, it on you right the the, 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 the the rioters took the opportunity of the unrest because remember there was this seething sense of disquiet mm -hmm. in the country at the time so mm -hmm. they were opportunistic they saw that the students were protesting so they started to break the mm -hmm. the, the house and, and, and loot the looting began which often happens mm -hmm. you can see it happening in the United States right now with the Black Power Matters thing. Right. But the news media took pictures of students in their gowns marching and juxtaposed that on oh, looting. The, right. And the, the news um, item that evening said students were looting and we were incensed. We were so incensed because mm. that was totally untrue. Yeah. Totally untrue. So I became inadvertently very involved. Mm. And on the way back from that march that evening, I remember being interviewed on, uh, I think it was RJ who interviewed me. Mm -hmm. And um, I mentioned to them that I had been in Mexico that summer, mm -hmm. 1968, when they had a terrible riot in Mexico and students were actually killed. Mm -hmm. And I said then that I never dreamt that in my own country I'd find myself in a similar situation faced with police brutality. Right. <laughs> yes. So that's what I remember. That is, I mean, it is sad, but it's still a reality to this day. Yes. And it was, to me, it was a very bold step because these were students who were, you know, more on the higher end in terms of being able to get such a well, it, level it, of education. Right. But the effort it was not successful because... It wasn't. No, they never, never, ever let him back in. So um, Rodney, his family, his, he had a wife who was pregnant at the time and he had two young children. So uh, we, the students and lecturers, just had to cover her and you know, mm -hmm. help her and so on. She eventually went back to Ghana. Wow. And as you know, subsequently, even the Guyanese government were very opposed to Rodney because of incendiary mm -hmm. and, thing. and they, they, he, he, they had him killed. Wow. So he actually wow. was murdered uh, some years after that. That's a very sad story. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's funny because we're all connected, even though we're from different Caribbean country. Because oh, one absolutely. man's fight for freedom is basically the same man's. No, fight but let for me freedom. just tell you the atmosphere on campus. Those were the days when, well, for me, it was an eye-opening experience because I really felt for the first time that I was a, I belonged to the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. The, it was a melting pot, a real melting pot. It's right. not like now where 90% of the students are Jamaicans. Mm -hmm. You had students from all over the Caribbean. And we sort of swapped each other's cultures. We yes. borrowed things. So there are certain words that even today, to this day, I still use that are Trinidadian, you know? Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so on. So it was, it was a lovely experience. And this is why, for instance, in CARICOM, a lot of the leaders mm -hmm. who were comrades on campus, who were friends on campus, you know, mm -hmm. you had Manning and um, PJ mm -hmm. and Ralph Gonzalez. Ralph Gonzalez was the student uh, guild president when I was on campus. Mm -hmm. And he always said, one day I'm going to be Prime Minister of St. Vincent. And so said, so done, he's now the longest serving uh, yes. Prime Minister of St. Vincent. And he was always engaged. But, what I'm saying is that when they meet each other at these meetings at the level they know they would have known each other they for would a long have time. known each other and understood each other and they mm. had that that camaraderie right mm -hmm. there you know so mm. it was it was a useful experience this it was very important for the political development of the region the the UWI um, acted as a kind of uh, uh, un unifying force then. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Cecile, thank you for this wealth of knowledge. You taught me a whole lot. Yeah. Right? And still give me a whole lot to think about.